Hey there and welcome back to Valley Por Vida. So now that you know about some non-alcoholic beverages to enjoy, how about you tell us some of the mo or we tell you rather the, some of the more popular cocktails in cocktail history. So let's go ahead and break down at least the top five. So according to restaurantware.com, the number five beverage is a whiskey sour. Apparently it was created back in England around the 1700s and it had mixed ingredients, so it tasted really good. <laughs> but get this, it wasn't necessarily created to be a delicious drink. Rather, it was initially meant to be used to combat seasickness. See, the liquor would help prevent crew members from getting too intoxicated, and later people found out that, you know, adding limes and lemons to the drink would help as well. And in case you're wondering, you know, how to make the perfect glass of it, the site recommends following the recipe you see on screen. It also says that this type of drink is best in an old-fashioned glass that holds about six to eight or six to 10 ounces rather. Now the site also says that the fourth most popular drink is the mojito and that, as with many popular beverages, uh, there are just many ways to create one. Apparently it was created back in the 19th century and later grew to popularity in Havana, Cuba around the 1900s. And if you're wondering how to make the perfect mojito, then you can follow this recipe on screen. The site also outlines that it can be served with muddle lime juice, uh, simple syrup, and of course sugar in the mix and that you can even add some mint leaves on the side of that, you know, the glass for extra flavor. And then coming in at number three on our list is the Negroni that was apparently created over in Florence, Italy around 1919. The site says that a man named Count Camillo uh, Negroni had asked the bartender to strengthen the already existing Americano and that they added gin to the drink instead of soda water and then replaced the, lem the lemon with an orange. <laughs> Soon after that, the beverage became widely popular and the Negroni even started up his own distillery there in Italy, making a business of it. Now, in order to make the perfect Negroni, the site recommends following this recipe that you see on screen and that it can also be served in an old-fashioned glass with ice cubes, of course, and perhaps even with sweet red vermouth. Now, there's also a number two cocktail drink on the list, which is the Moscow Mule. It outlines that this was actually created by a woman whose father actually owned a copper factory over in Russia. And then when they created designs for mugs, she wanted to see if she could fill them with something unique too. After she met someone who owned Smirnoff Vodka Distillery, and then he had introduced ginger to beer here in the United States, she worked with him and one other person to create this drink, of course, which would be served in a copper mug. Now, in order to make the perfect version of this beverage, the site says that we can follow the recipe on screen here, and that once you pour the ginger beer and all everything together, all in ice, then it's bound to be a delicious drink. And now for the moment that you've been wondering about, the number one cocktail on the site's list of the top five most popular ones out there, we're talking about the Old Fashioned. A man named James E. Pepper was actually a bartender in Louisville, Kentucky back in 1880, and he's the one who created this drink. Turns out he later took his recipe to New York City, and that's where, you know, he started to really catch the attention of many people across the globe. And now, of course, it's super popular, so much so that the first two weeks in June, the entire city celebrates Old Fashioned Fortnite, where a lot of bars host different events and offer unique drink specials, so it's pretty much a lot of fun. <laughs> and in order to make the perfect Old Fashioned, the site recommends that we follow this recipe on a screen, and then we can stir and serve up a great version of the most popular cocktail beverage. All right, so now let's go ahead and switch gears just a little bit. <laughs> Recently on the show, we introduced you to various authors with good literature that you should definitely read. And now we're bringing back one for some beneficial health tips. See, he's actually a prostate cancer survivor and he's the founder of the Blue Cure Men's Health Nonprofit Organization. Plus, he serves as a nationwide men's health and mental health advocate. 
Now, June actually marked National Men's Health Month, but the things that we learned two months ago are still those of which, you know, we can take with us and implement into our lives today and every single day. So, you know, we went ahead and spoke with author and writer and speaker Gabe Canales about his tour across the state of Texas, as well as for details on how men can schedule their checkups, know their numbers, discuss screenings with a doctor, and get more tips. Also, just learn about different lifestyle modifications that can help that their health improve overall and of course even lower the risk of being affected by some of these leading illnesses and diseases. He actually says that during COVID millions of men in America missed their checkups and their screenings including many Hispanic men. So he's here today again to tell us about why that's not just a good idea and to help us kind of just know how to take action when it comes to our health and with some good tips for you to keep in mind. So go ahead and take a look. So I wrote this book, Unexpected Diagnosis, because I want, it's, it's for everyone. It's for men of all ages. It's for the women who, who love us. Uh, it's an encouraging and it's a hopeful book. It's sharing my experiences of living with prostate cancer for more than a decade. So I still live with it today. I still live with prostate cancer uh, 12 years later. And, uh, but I'm healthier today than when I was diagnosed. I want, I want your, your viewers to know how I've done that. Again, I've been able to seek out the leading medical experts in the country, and I've devoted the last decade of my life to men's health and mental health advocacy. And that's what this book talks about. This book talks about the cross section of our mental health and how that also affects our physical health. So especially in the Hispanic community, there is a lot of stigma that men have in confronting health issues. You know, I grew up with a father and a grandfather that would always say, just suck it up. If you felt like you were sick, um, you know, they didn't go to get it annual checkups. I have a father who's on 16 prescription pills every day. He's obese. He's a stroke. He's still recovering from stroke. He has hypertension. He has high cholesterol. And he said that he told his doctor, my son said that I should eat more plants and take less pills. And his doctor told him, well, you tell your son, I'm the doctor and he's not. And that really upset me because we know, listen to this, we know that 80 to 90% of heart disease deaths are preventable. How? Diet. That's from the CDC and the Cleveland Clinic. So what prostate cancer, which is what I live with, kills about 32, 33,000 men every year. 11 to 12 times more men die every year from heart disease. It's our number one killer. It's also the number one killer of women. The premise of this book is to let is to let men and women know is to educate them about how if we focus on simple steps, simple lifestyle habits that can improve our heart health, we will significantly reduce our risk of every other leading killer. And, and as well as leading killers for women too. So it all starts with lifestyle. It all starts with simple steps and, and simple habits. Now, Gabe's also got a book called Unexpected Diagnosis, uh, Prostate Cancer in the Wake of Call to Live Healthier and Happier. And he's aiming again just to provide lessons learned from his own health experiences and, you know, to inspire other men to take action as best they can to live physically and mentally healthier. So be sure to check out his work if you feel it can help you, a loved one, or of course, someone else. And with that on your to-do list, that concludes our show for today. So thanks a bunch for joining us and be sure to tune in again next time. We'll see you then.